Right, good evening everyone. Just gonna hang around just for a few minutes because we've obviously just gone live and normally I start off with a little window just at the beginning just saying what's going on and things but we've just dived straight in this time so just gonna be talking just for a little bit just to make sure if there's any issues with the sound let me know down in the comments because I can't hear what's going on, I've not got the speakers on, so otherwise you'll get a whole load of feedback. Anyway, how are we all? I can see there's quite a few of you here already. Oh, and we've already got some comments coming in. The idea of tonight's session is just to kind of just go through some question and answer things. Basically, when we were here last week, I believe it was. Uh, sorry, I've got one more button to press. There we are. Sound is good. Aye, aye. Welcome, everyone. Yes, and... Yeah, I'd forgotten to press live on Facebook, so apologies if you're on Facebook, but we are now live over on Facebook as well. So we're here, YouTube, Facebook, it's all good. We're here for a yeah, question and answer session this evening, so if you've got any questions about the maritime industry, YouTube, the channel, me, well, questions about yourself even, stick them in the comments. We're going to try and get through quite a few. Um, yes, of course, ask questions in the chat. Um, at the moment it's going at a reasonable pace so I can keep up with them so we'll go with that obviously if things start to take off a bit which I'm sure you'll probably mess with me and do that in a bit anyway um, yeah so we'll just see how it goes I can see there's quite a few here from before I before I even started so yes we got a oh first super chat coming in as well so thank you very much uh, I can't make it but keep fighting hashtag keep fighting I'll catch a rerun every video you do is potentially another life saved Saved for a Coast Guardsman, that means everything. Well, thank you very much. That is, um, well, it's it's not what we aim for with the videos. I mean, they're all, they're all accurate. Most of you probably don't know this, actually, but although I publish the videos and they're all for general interest and most of you watch them just because you're interested in the topic, really, but I actually do quite a lot of work with actual maritime training providers and colleges and organizations and things like that so everything that goes up is accurate and it's to the same standard that we would do like legitimate industry training with but it's just presented in a slightly different way just to try and make it appealing for the general audience so yes everything is there potentially it might help people that's that's what it's there for so yeah thank you very much for that comment and things and yeah, that, that's, that's just the general idea with the channel, is it's just there for, well, I mean, it's on YouTube for a bit of fun, but we try and keep everything accurate and keep everything going. Oh, blimey, we've got quite a lot of questions coming in. Okay, why is the ship blue? Ah, we knew that one was coming, so that was in the thumbnail. The ship is blue simply because it's actually my favourite colour. So when I was drawing that vessel, it was one of the things kind of like, Obviously, when you're drawing, you've got the freedom of just picking absolutely any colour. And back when I drew that first one, you'll notice that particular ship actually crops up in a lot of videos. That's what I do with my artwork. Once it's, once it's created, the vessels can be reused. And that one in particular is it's, uh, it's, it's a general bulker. It's a geared bulk carrier. So most, most bulkers that I've been on, they don't have their own gear. And the gear being the crane so that they can discharge themselves and things like that. But that particular one is a geared bulker. And the reason I drew it was because it, it just makes it a bit more interesting. You notice on, obviously on YouTube and things, you've got the normal, the normal window shape kind of like this that you can see on the screen there. So 1920 by 1080. It's not actually a great shape for fitting ships in, particularly if you're floating them in the water, you end up with just a strip down the middle. So if there's lots of ships that have got literally just the plain deck with nothing on deck, they just don't look very interesting. So that was the reason I put gear on it. And the reason it's blue is, yeah, why not? I've got lots of other ships. We do lots of other colors. And you'll actually notice I tint them, um, tint them different colors and things like that. So yeah, we, we change the colors up all the time. And yeah, right. Uh, videos are good. They inspired me. Applied for a deck cadet ship. Uh, but you didn't get it. Oh, sorry to hear that. Hopefully you can reapply and have another go. That's that's the route I took. I, I went through a deck cadet ship and yeah, trained up. It was about three year training on, I did mine on the cruise ships, but you can do it on any merchant vessel and things like that. So yeah, shame you didn't get that, but yeah, maybe apply next time and you'll see 
see what's going on there. Will there be more Discord activity soon? Uh, hopefully, yes. I mean, I've got the Discord. We, it's, uh, it's part of the community and things like that. I don't know really how to use Discord. I, I've set it up. It's something I need to learn a lot more about and maybe I need to join a couple of other servers or something like that just to get an idea of how they run. But um, yeah, it's, yeah, they, there should be more activity. There, there is activity in there sort of like among yourselves and things and I've got alerts set up. If, if you're a Patreon or something like that, then I get a ping every time you comment in, in the community section, but then the, the public section I hop in and out of every now and then and, and kind of see what's going on. We miss you. Thank you. I don't know who that is, but I am probably miss you too. Thank you very much. <laughs> Uh, favourite ship? Oh, or oh, favourite sci-fi ship? Oh, I don't know. It's <laughs> the, I, I, back in the day, I, if I was watching any, any sci-fi, I, I don't want to be controversial, but it would have been Star Trek. So, Star Trek, Star Wars, I, I haven't seen most of the Star Wars, in all honesty. I, I've tried to watch them. I, I actually had them when I went on ships. I thought it would be a good, a good... Well, I say series, but they're, they're movies. You've got to get through all of them. I thought it'd be a good thing to, to try and get through on a contract, but you're so tired after watching things like that, and it just wasn't quite gripping enough for me to get through. So, yeah, so, well, if, if, if it was any sci-fi ship, yeah, it's going to be the Star Trek ones, and when I was younger, that, that was when, uh, what was it? It was, it, was, uh, it was Voyager came out then, so, yeah, if anything, that, that would be my... That would be my... <laughs> my choice uh, okay so we've got a couple of comments on Facebook as well I'm just going to be hopping between the two so whichever platform you're on ask away I've got them both up in front of me at the moment so we're just going to be flying through some of these this evening and I thought it'd just be a good opportunity for you to get to know me a little bit and hopefully I can get to know some of you in the comments I'll see you popping up and things like that so hopping over to Facebook now how does the break of a ship operate well, luckily I have a video on that. It's uh, how do ships stop without brakes? Um, they don't actually have brakes. The only way you can get them to stop is to put the engines in reverse. Um, in a car, obviously you've got the road and tires and you've got an enormous amount of friction between the two. So all you need to do is put the brakes on to stop the tires turning and you can dissipate all your kinetic energy just through the friction between your tires and the road surface. On a ship, you've not got that option, there's no, well there is friction actually between a ship and the water, but it's negligible and I mean it, it does stop you, it, it just takes a couple of miles to stop, that's all. So the way that I always used to stop was just a slow and gradual speed reduction, so you're talking a couple of miles out, just start knocking that speed back and you'll, you'll slowly drift in and it's almost like a ship parks itself at that point, it's very easy, I can recommend it to anyone. <laughs> Uh, how to calculate arrival displacement of vessels. Oh, that's going to be a bit bit complicated to run through at the moment. Um, but yeah, in general, you're doing a bit of guesswork, really. You can, you've got your departure displacement because you can actually read all the drafts, but when you're arriving in port, obviously you can't read them. Sometimes you might have a, a camera you can lower down and have a read, but... In the absence of that, all you've got is keeping track of everything you've used. So fresh water that you might have discharged, you can work out the weight, how much you've discharged of that. If you've moved any any containers around on deck or something, you can keep track of all of that. Um, the fuel you've used, um, any wastewater that you've built up, any garbage that's been around, you just kind of keep track of all of that and you calculate the effect that it all has on the ship overall. And you just use that to work out your displacement for when you arrive. So it's pretty much the same as departure. It's just you'll have used some stuff. Obviously, if you've got fresh water generators and things like that, it might have gone up a little bit, but you've been burning fuel as well. So, yeah, that, that's how we go through that. Um, are you a master unlimited? No, I, I got my chief mate unlimited. Uh, certification and then I went into piloting and you didn't actually need any certificate of competency to be a pilot because you're it's certainly in the UK at least it's the port authority that gives you the authorization so they a lot of them do have entry requirements but you just need to satisfy them that you're 
you're competent and they usually take the competency from having a certificate of competency and things. Um, but not always and it, by, by no means does it have to be Master Unlimited. So no, I've got the Chief Mate Unlimited and then I came ashore into pilotage and well, the rest of history actually because we, we ended up here, so <laughs> yes. Uh, okay, hello, hello, hello. Uh, any tips for a future cadet? Yes, just enjoy it. Go go on, because you're going to be you're going to be a cadet for about three years there. So there's so much to take in. You're going to have time at college, time on the ship. It's all going to be a first, a, fir a first experience of absolutely everything. So just make the most of it. So like you're going to get on, you're going to be nervous, but everyone's been there. Everyone's been in that position before. So yeah, don't, I'm going to say don't be nervous, but you're going to be and just take it in your stride and yeah, ju just enjoy it. Just, just get as much from it as you possibly can. And yeah, you you'll get through it and you'll you'll sort of like you'll, you'll qualify in a couple of years time and then yeah you'll be there for good uh same again advice for young officers starting out i'm i'm half thinking of doing a doing a whole session actually on careers at sea because obviously i've been through it and i went through the deck thing but yeah you've got other other systems and things like that, sort of like the, the engineering route, the electrical route and all this kind of stuff. But yeah, I was half thinking about doing a session on careers at sea and like the different options. Obviously, you've got the merchant ships, which is what the channel focuses on. But the maritime industry is, is absolutely massive. I've um, sort of like been in contact with quite a few people in the last week that are in different little niches of the industry. And they're all like... Um, they're, they're all fascinating, be it different types of ship, different sizes of ship, and they all do really specialist tasks. So around the UK, particularly at the moment, it's very big on like small boats, wind farm support, and all this kind of thing. Years ago, just before I started training, it was all the, the, the North Sea, so the oil support and all that kind of stuff, and that, that all went downhill in the in the last financial turndown. And yeah, now, it, now it's much smaller things like wind farm support and all that kind of stuff. So yes, right, hopping back over to YouTube now because I've seen there's been a lot of comments coming through um, just while I've been answering some of those Facebook ones. Uh, how did you develop your art style? Well, I, I actually did graphics back at, back at school. So this is uh, when you're a teenager, sort of like before the compulsory education in that area. So I did graphics then and I've, I've always liked the the technical style with the like the floor plans and engineering diagrams and all that kind of stuff. And you'll notice that my art style kind of pulls influence on that. It's that that two D breakdown from those sort of diagrams that present things very easily if you're viewing them from different angles. Um, but I've tried to try to move that along a little bit and try to get it in a bit of 3D. So it's just gradually evolving over time, just as I'm learning different things. So obviously you'll notice some of the really early images that I had of ships. Um, I think it was the video on the the Andrea Doria. That was it. Those were some of the first ships that I actually drew. It's actually still one of my favourite videos. I'd, every now and then I'll go and watch it back because six months later is... is I, I forget what was in it, so it's, it's always nice to rewatch the old ones. But yes, those ones you'll notice that there's no shading, there's no nothing, sort of like it's just the outline of the ship, some shapes for the windows and the funnels and things like that. And then over time, it's kind of evolved, and I've learned to put more put more detail into the images and gradually to add a bit of shading and. Um, you can, you can make things look like spheres and look like look like tubes just from the shading itself. So it's the same shapes that I've always done. It's just adding that little bit of shading and it kind of just makes it a little bit more 3D-esque. And that's really my style is, I mean, you, you'll see it running throughout the videos. I have started mixing in a bit more recently with um, Photoshop. Um, well, not Photoshop, but it's the, the iPad equivalent because I, I do all my drawings on an iPad and then I pull them across to Photoshop or whatever, ready for animation. and. I've tried to get some uh, 
raster, raster art. So you've got vector and raster. So you notice all the ships are all vector art, and some of, a lot of the backgrounds now they're they're raster, so they're made of pixels and things like that, like a paintbrush and things. So I try and do that for the backgrounds just to try and build in a bit more, a bit more realism. We're, I, I don't try and make it photorealistic or anything, by no means am I claiming <laughs> it's not, obviously. Um, but yeah, it's, it's trying to make it, trying to make it believable, that's all we're going for. I mean, it's the story that people are enjoying and yeah, if, if, you, if you can get, get that story in there, then the art can support it in a way. Uh, top 10 ships. Oh, I'm not sure I could even name 10 ships. It's I'm, obviously there's some of the famous ones. I can do the top 10 ships that I've made videos on. That's probably the best ones. And I say the, the Andrea Doria was right up there at the top. I, I, I love making that video. That one was great. And it's one that I'd probably remake it at some point. Um, just because I, I love the story. I remember it was, it was in one of the comments for a video at some point that I was told about it. And yeah, after that it was on my list and yeah, that, that's definitely my favorite. And then since then I've enjoyed all sorts like doing the, the I think it was the the Empress of Ireland. That was, that was another fascinating one. Again, I hadn't heard of it until people commented on the videos and yeah, that, that's something. If, if there's topics that you want me to cover, leave comments on the videos. I, I do try and read them, but nowadays I can't get back and comment to all of them. So obviously if, if people in the community, it's sort of like if you're on Patreon or something and, and you're commenting on there, I reply straight away and stuff. But in the, in the public comments on YouTube, I, I just can't keep up nowadays. I, I do, try and, I do try, try and read them all still. So stick in a little note. And if there's something you really want to cover, get one of these live streams and yeah hopefully I'll, I'll see the comment as we're going through. Uh, how can I find information about plotting methods? Check out my other channel Casual Navigation Academy I think it is at the moment. I change the name every now and then um, but yeah that's I, I've got some radar plotting tutorials on there. Uh, can you do a story with Carl D. Bradley? Oh I've not heard of that one let's just scribble that down and I'll, I'll have a read of it and we shall see Carl D. Bradley. There we are. We shall see what happens with that. I say I, I get lots of comments like this and if it's a ship I haven't heard of I'll always take a note of it and I'll read the story, see what happened and the, the best ones are the ones that come out as videos and things. Uh, do you work at sea? Not anymore. I used to. Um, I spent... Uh, what was it five six years something like that working deep sea and then I wanted to come home so I, I kind of worked on ships but at home so I was a pilot I, I'd go out to the ships and drive them into port and, and park them kind of like a parking attendant just for ships um, but then maybe 18 months ago something like that I, I stopped that and now I focus on the YouTube channel and helping to develop like training programs it's, it's all based based around kind of like the, the style of the videos and things, presenting things in a in an engaging way because um, well people don't do training videos like that and uh, yeah I try and make them I just try and make them interesting. So we had a ping and alert uh, oh thank you very much uh, Charles, Charles over on Facebook just sent a couple of stars thank you that, that's very kind of you um, I say you don't you don't need to do any donations or anything like that. It's I uh, I say uh, I I love doing this. <laughs> this is why I do it. Um, but no, thank you. It's very much appreciated. Um, oh, blimey! Thank you. <laughs> We're getting lots and lots of pings. Thank you very much. Um, what is my current rank on board? Uh, I'm not on a ship. I don't work on a ship. My certificate allows me to be Chief Mate Unlimited, which would be, yeah, a Chief Officer on any size ship really, um, or a Master on small ships, less than, I think it's 3,000 tonnes, something like that, I say. But in reality, actually, any ship, they, they wouldn't just say, oh, there's your certificate, go and be Master. They want you to have experience on those ships. So in reality, if I was going back to sea, I'd, I'd join as a Junior Officer on the ship and and just work up on that particular ship type. Uh, 
Have I ever been on a ship taking on water? I assume you mean sinking. I mean, I've been on ships that have bunkered fresh water, but I guess that's not what you mean. Um, <laughs> no, um, well, not that I've been aware of. I mean, as a, as a pilot, I've been on loads and loads of different ships, and for all I know, some of them might have been. I, I don't know, but no, as, as far as I'm aware, every ship I've been on has been, yeah, perfectly seaworthy. Uh, what made you choose to work on ships? Apologies if it's a common question. It's, no, 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 it's, uh, to be honest, I was at university. I, I, if you don't know, I did physics at university. That, that's my, that's my real background. Um, and I was trying to think about what I wanted to do afterwards and I came across, I, I'd done traveling before I went to uni. And then I found that you could work on ships. It was still to do with physics and forces and things like that. But it was learning navigation and the vectors and all those calculations and that kind of stuff. And it really seemed to combine physics, maths, travel and exploring. So, yeah, it, it just seemed to be yeah, a perfect career choice. And I've always been into sailing small boats and things like that when I was younger. And I loved all of that. So, yeah, it, that, that's where it all developed from. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, thank you. Your videos are a nice inspiration for someone teaching English in a maritime school abroad. Oh, thank you very much. Another impact. Yeah, no, well, thank you. Yeah, I, I say I, I put the content out there because I love making it. And originally I just wanted to learn how to do a bit of animation. So I chose a topic that, that I really loved. Um, well, I, uh, yeah, it, it was my job and I knew the topic inside out. So I didn't need to focus on learning the topic. I could focus on learning how to do animations and it all just... It, it all just spiralled from there, so yeah, no, I, I'm glad that I'm, well, I'm, I'm delighted that the videos are having an impact and you're all enjoying them. Yes. Is it actually very dark in the middle of the ocean at night? Surprisingly, no. It's, I mean, one of the things you get in the middle of the ocean is you can see everything. I mean, there, there's no light pollution. That's the key. Um, so the light all comes from stars, you can see, especially on a clear night, you can see all the stars, you can see the Milky Way, you can see absolutely everything up in the sky. We were halfway across the Pacific one time, and um, yeah, this is when I was working on the cruise ships, and they wanted to do a presentation to, to, the, to the passengers, and we did do a bit of stargazing and stuff, so I, I got to do it, we went up on the, one of the top decks, and we actually turned off all the deck lights and things. And the amount you can see up there is just unreal because it's, I say that there's no lights, there's no street lights, there's no buildings, there's no cars, there's, there's nothing. So what you can see, you can see absolutely everything. And in terms of actually seeing in front of you, obviously your eyes have adjusted to it. So it's not that there's no light, you've got the moon, you've got a little bit of light from the stars and things like that. And yeah, it's, it is dark, but yeah, you can still see tons and tons and tons. And we're getting little hearts and things all popping up. So, yeah, thank you. I, d I don't know who's sending that. I don't know how you're sending that. But, oh, very much appreciated. Hearts and smileys and all sorts popping in. So, thank you. Uh, someone's saying there they'd love to see a video on careers. Yeah, well, I think... Um, obviously, I've started doing some of these live streams and things like that. And they're just a way of interacting a little bit with you. A, a career video certainly wouldn't work as a normal video, but I think something like that as a live stream is probably something we could probably really work with. So yeah, I, th I think we'll actually look into something like that. So it's it's already on my list. So we'll, we'll look at planning that in. Uh, right, just hopping back across to Facebook now. So if you're just joining us, I've got uh, the stream running simultaneously on Facebook and on YouTube. So whichever platform you're watching on, you can comment and they pop up, I'm reading as much as I can as they're coming through. Um, yeah, so comment whichever platform you're watching on. So over on Facebook now, can you please make a video on GMDSS, animation tutorial videos? So GMDSS, it's a massive topic. Um, the, <laughs> the short course that I did on it was actually a week long. And yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a big topic. I, I've covered some little elements of it. Um, I won't be able to cover GMDSS in total, but I'm trying to go through 
possibly some of the equipment. I know I've done VHF, nav text, and things like that. The, the videos might not actually be named as such, so sort of like the nav text video is actually about um, how ships avoid rough weather and things like that, and it's because it comes through nav text. So um, I am going to put a playlist together actually of videos that would be useful to, to kind of go together in an actual training thing, so hopefully there'll be a playlist of ones that, that might be useful in that sense. Uh, you can see the stars like that up North, Calin North Can Canada, no lights. Yeah, it's, um, yeah, nor North Canada, it'll be the same. If there's no lights around, the stars and things that you can see is just unreal. I'm, um, I'm kind of in the north of the UK at the moment, and on the clear nights you, you can actually see the aurora if you go outside. I haven't managed to see it yet, the nights I've gone out it's just not been there. But, yeah, it's, um, yeah, clear skies, they're, they're unreal. Um, can you do an animation video tutorial of manual draft survey calculations? Full explanation. It's possible. It is, it is something that I'd love to do. I mean, I've, I've always quite enjoyed draft surveys, but the, the only thing is, the video on that sort of thing, it struggles to be that engaging because it's just following a formula, following a formula through and through and through. So. I'll have a look into whether it could make an exciting video, but I, I try and pick topics that are going to be that are going to be interesting for like the general public, as well as containing things that are useful for people in the industry. So you'll notice that pretty much all the videos have a serious message that is picked up, and that that people in the industry and that people are that are fully trained they pick up on that sort of thing. But the, the general video is actually geared towards yeah, the, the general public, just boosting engagement in the maritime industry. And yeah, hopefully you're all like enjoying what you see there. And um, yeah, that, that's, um, but yeah, we, we, we can have a look at a video about dra manual draft calculations and things. And I say it's, it's all about whether, whether we can make it interesting enough. Some more comments here just saying about uh, talking about career at sea and things. So yeah, I, th I think that's definitely a an idea for, for a live stream and that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, so we'll look at careers at sea and then uh, final comment there. Good day, mate. Love your stuff. Watch every chance I get. Thank you. Thank you, Troy. That's, um, yeah, that, that's, it's great to hear people are, are checking in and uh, are watching and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, no, I'm really glad you enjoy it. Uh, Nice to have a, uh, this is back on YouTube now, so nice to have a face to the pleasant voice. <laughs> Thank you. I, 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 I know everyone goes on about these, uh, what do they call it, face reveals and that kind of stuff, but it's it's not something, certainly recently, it's not something I've been actively avoiding. It's, it's just that I'd, the channel had developed into such a style that it's all about animated videos and all that kind of stuff, but Equally, one of the things I love about YouTube was just learning animation and learning how to make different videos. And now I'm doing the same thing, just doing it live. So obviously this is only the second live stream I've ever done public publicly. So it's going to be a bit, a bit all over the place and a, a bit, bit shoddy as it were. But yeah, it's it's all just here, just to learn and just to, just to see, yeah, how we can improve things in time. Any opinions on older ships being scrapped? Yes, uh, obviously I've seen a lot of the things where they're, they're all sent to sent to other countries and run up on the beach and it's incredibly dangerous working conditions and things like that. So these older ships as well, they, they were built at a time with, where they've got such hazardous materials in them. They might be full of asbestos and full of all sorts of chemicals and things like that. So. Obviously, ships need to be scrapped, um, but there needs to be a sustainable way of doing it, and running it up on the beach isn't... I, I mean, obviously people are making money by doing it, but it's, it's not really sustainable, is it? It's, it's not fair on all the workers, and yeah, it's, it's just finding a, find, finding a real solution. Um, you, you can't just... I know, I know people say sink them and make a reef and stuff, but... Yeah, you, you need to have stripped everything out of them before you can do any of that. How much weather can a cruise ship take if the stabilizers fail? Well, the stabilizers aren't actually there to for the 
ship's benefit, they're there for the passenger's benefit. So the cruise ship, it's irrelevant really whether the stabilizers are in or not. The, the ship is quite happy rolling around from side to side, but an elderly passenger with a nice cocktail in their hand, they're not that keen. So that's why there's stabilizers. Um, other ships that have stabilizers like container ships and things, again, they, the, the ship, the hull and things is, is fine, but the passengers or the, or the containers on the container ship, silly me, <laughs> containers, passengers, honestly. Um, but yeah, the, the stowage um, systems for those and they just reduces the load on all of that. So um, yeah, the, the stabilizers, yeah, without them, you, I mean, you, you can, it's not, it's not that the ship can't take it. I mean, in the right hands, it could probably ride any weather if you're hitting things at the right angle and the right speed and, and stuff like that. I mean, at some point the, the sea does get so big that any ship is gonna be overwhelmed. But yeah, the, the stabilizers aren't aren't the defining factor there. Uh, you move from Pompey to Cheshire. Top tip: don't do that. Stay by the sea. Yes, great. Stay by the sea. Definitely. It, it's um, I, I've been lucky. I, I've always lived by the sea. I mean, that's that's where I work at the. It's yeah, by by the sea. I I do enjoy that. Are you still working at sea job? Uh, yeah, we went through that a little bit ago. Um, I'm in the industry, just in the kind of the, the the periphery of the industry, as it were. So I I I help create training materials and and things like that now. So it's also actually stemmed from the YouTube channel. So the the style of the content and people enjoying watching that and things like that. Um, but yeah, that that's that's my link to the industry nowadays. Um, I'm a graphic designer and I've definitely noticed your evolution in illustration. I love seeing it. Thank you. Yes, um, I say I, I, I just love keeping it evolving over time. Um, I always worry about things getting a bit stale and things like just, just carrying on as they always have been. So I always try and make a little improvement each time, even if it's just, even if it's like some procedure that I'm trying to put in, like some of the stuff I've been doing recently with the animations and things is is, is having set um, set parameters and stuff for like the 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 ocean scene. So where the where the camera's looking down at the ocean and it's it's generating all those little wavelets and stuff on the screen. It's it's actually just a, a noise texture that's been just applied over a plain blue black background and just scaled to make it look like waves and then traveling stuff like that. I've just tried to speed up a little bit by just having a preset that I can just drag in and and put across and yeah what is the app called that you use to draw ships uh affinity designer it's on the ipad uh it's on the computer as well actually um i you I, I got affinity because i use the adobe suite on the computer so it's illustrator and things so the very early illustrations were on that but then the next evolution was kind of getting some sort of a pen tablet and i was like do i get one for the computer or or what, and I already had an iPad, so I thought, now I'll see what apps they've got for that, and Affinity Designer on the iPad was absolutely amazing. I can recommend it to anyone that wants to do vector style art and things like that. So um, yeah, that's that, That's what the drawing is done in. I then save it as an SVG and via Google Drive and send that then through to the computer and open it up on Illustrator and shuffle around the layers a little bit just so that I can have everything animated how I want. So for example, the scene with Big Crane, uh, the container crane that the <laughs> makes an appearance every now and then, everything in that is in different layers. So I've got the frame body in one layer, the, the crane arm in another layer, the cab in another layer, and the, um, the hook in another layer. So you can animate each layer separately so all the little bits are flying around and it goes up and down and all sorts. And it's all to do with yeah, all to do with the layers, and that's that's the beauty of digital art. I mean, you, you can do layers with um, the raster art, so I do it as well with the backgrounds and things like that, where you've got the different wave layers, so the foreground waves, the midground waves, and they're sliding across the screen and things. Um, but yeah, it's an affinity designer for the vector stuff, and uh, I've recently started using Procreate as well. That's the that's the raster version on the iPad. And 
again, I love it, and you'll hopefully be noticing the backgrounds are starting to evolve a little bit now as well. So, yes. Are there any accident reports on catamaran ferries? I'm sure there are. There's loads of catamaran ferries. I, I look for my reports on the MAIB website, so just type into Google MAIB accident reports, um, and you can browse through. You, you, I don't know whether you can sort them by number of hulls or so. I don't know, but there, there will be reports there. The other good source for accident reports is the NTSB. So again, NTSB accident reports, and you actually you have to select maritime once you're in there because they cover maritime aviation, trains, railways, and things like that. So yeah, either of those. Do you work with any other YouTubers who make educational animations? No, um, I, I do all this myself at the moment. Um, I, I did a little bit, um, just just the odd collaboration with, with people every now and then. Um, I'd, I'd be happy to work with more, but yeah, no, at the, the moment I, I, haven't, I haven't made contact with it. I do keep meaning to get in contact with some other people and things, and there's, there's plenty of collaborations and stuff that we can be doing. So yeah, I, in the future, possibly at the moment, no. Uh, did Exxon Valdez and Edmund Fitzgerald? Yes, we did. Uh, right, I've seen here on Facebook and YouTube somebody asking about the difference between schooners and clippers. Unfortunately, I don't know. It's, a, it's something that I'd have to research. So, um, yeah. We'd love to hear more about maritime education so from the Netherlands. Ah, uh, yes, you do the dual, oh, you've said here actually, Netherlands, yeah, and I actually do dual study for both engine and deck. Yeah, because I, I met a lot of captains actually who had done the dual thing, so from, from, um, from that area you get a lot of owner skippers, um, they, they own the boat and they've got the Master Unlimited, so yeah, they, they drive it and things, and they, they've got the deck and the engine, so you'll find the Master is the one doing the chief engineering and the uh, and the navigating and all sorts like that. So, yeah, the, the, it's a fascinating way of doing it. And yeah, I, I do need to have a look into that a little bit more because, I mean, in, in the UK we only did it we we only did it one way. So you could either do deck or engine. But no, it's fascinating that you can do it both ways. Uh, what part of the UK are you from? Uh, originally the south coast, near Portsmouth, actually. For that chap earlier on, the person commenting about Pompey. That was, yeah, my, where I was actually originally from, so it was all Royal Navy around there. So a lot of my friends went into the forces and things, and um, yeah, not, not many of us went the merchant route, because you've got Portsmouth and Southampton down there on the south coast. Portsmouth is obviously all the warships, and Southampton is the commercial ships, and I ended up going, going the latter way. Easiest position fixing... Oh, we just hopped around there. But I saw the comment, easiest position fixing for your TRB, for Celestial. Yes, um, I've got some videos about Celestial fixing, actually. They're across on the other channel that I do. Um, I haven't posted on it in a long time. It kind of just contains the old tutorials that I made years ago. And yeah, it's, it's how to do Celestial fixing and things like that. So um, yeah, go, go and check that out. There's... Um, by by the time you get your head around it, it's it's not too bad. Um, obviously, the the easiest celestial thing you could do is just a gyro error, just shooting a gyro bearing of a of a star and comparing that to the what where the, where it's supposed to be. So that that's how you work up and do all of those. Uh, what got you started doing YouTube? Okay, um, yeah, it, it, <laughs> I don't I. It was just somewhere to dump videos, to be honest. <laughs> I, I, I was a pilot at the time, and as a pilot, you, you, you're not out working all the time. You spend a lot of time waiting for your next orders to come through. So you have a lot of time between ships, as it were. And you can do any hobbies if it's easy to stop, go out to work and come back and pick up on it again. So I thought I'd, I want to learn a bit of animation because it's on the computer. I can sit and do a little bit. When the orders come in, I can stop my animation, go and get dinner, get ready for work, go out and do a ship, come back if it's a reasonable time, do a bit more animation. So I did that for a bit. And then you're like, what do you do with animations once you made them? What do you, I mean, they could sit on the computer, but they don't really do anything there. So I thought I'll stick them up on YouTube. That's People might find them and have a look at them. And within... 
It was like my fourth or fifth video, the one about why don't cruise ships tip over. It just started taking off and I say from, from there I, I just got addicted and just kept making them and yeah, the, the YouTube was a nice place to dump them and I, I say it's, it just all spiralled from there. Uh, why is the ship on the thumbnail blue? Ah, you'll have to watch the replay, it's right at the beginning of the replay for that one. <laughs> I, it's just my favourite colour, that's all. Um, what's the hardest thing about working at sea? Uh, it changes depending on your age, I think. Um, being away from home actually is, is what it ended up with. That was the thing that kind of pushed me ashore in the end. So I, you, you, I, I felt like I was visiting my own house and I wanted to feel like I was living in my own house instead. So yeah, it's, it's the time away from time away from home is the hardest thing. But obviously, when you're young and you've got no commitments, that's the best thing because you're getting to explore and you're getting to see the world. So yeah, it's it, it can it can be both. Uh, when you wanted physics, why not aviation? Um, I couldn't afford aviation. <laughs> to train to be a pilot or something costs an absolute fortune. Whereas maritime training, you do a cadetship, everything is paid for you. They they even pay you monthly while you're doing it. So yeah, it came down to the finances. I, I'd have loved aviation as well, but it just wasn't accessible. And I didn't want to build up more debt at that point. Uh, do you know anything about the RFA or anyone in it? Yes, they, they train with the merchant fleet. So the, we had RFA cadets with us as well. So. I was on cruise ships, people on container ships, oil tankers, and RFA. We, we all did the same training all together, and actually with the tickets that I've got, you can go and work on RFA and things like that. They, they, it's, uh, for anyone that doesn't know, it's Royal Fleet Auxiliary, and they're like the supply ships for the Navy. They, they, they're like the fuel tankers, and they carry cargo and all this kind of stuff. They, they support the warships. It's like um, civilians in support of... Um, yeah, in, in support of the military and things like that. Um, sea shanties, yes, but I'm not going to sing them because you won't enjoy that at all. <laughs> right, let's hop back over to Facebook and see uh, see if we've got another couple over here. Do ships still degauss? Yes, actually, degaussing is something... Let me make a note of that. Um, but it's, it's all to do with magnetism and things, and... Mag the magnetic compass is something that I love. Um, I, I can't remember exactly about degaussing. Was that the one um, to do with uh, magnetic mines and things? I can't remember. I'll have to do a little bit of research. Um, but yes, so they, they probably do. I, I think it would definitely be worth reading into that. Um, called exploitation. Yes, I think this is coming back to the um, uh, uh, the um, scrapping ships and things like that. Yes, it is. Would you like a video on liquefaction and other cargo properties? Oh yes, liquefaction. Ooh, is that what's coming? On on YouTube tomorrow, you've got another video coming. Uh, it's in early access for patrons at the moment. Um, but yeah, it should be released tomorrow. Not liquefaction as such, but it's to do with cargo properties. So yes. Stay tuned on YouTube. Be out YouTube tomorrow and Facebook next week. I, I just kind of have a little bit of a mismatch between the publishing thing there, but towards the end of the month, they'll get a lot closer together and there'll be more news coming about that soon. Um, and thank you for the live stream. Yes, you're welcome. So, yes, I'm, I'm glad you're enjoying it. And yeah, I, I'm, glad, I'm glad to start to meet some of you guys and things. Yes. And, oh, that reminds me actually, because... Um, one of the purposes for this stream was actually to introduce you to somebody because I've been working on this for a little while now. Um, I didn't want to go down the route of lots of t-shirts and printing and things like that. So instead, what I've made is a little captain. He's actually called the little captain and he is designed to be able to just sit on the bridge of a ship so he'll sit there quite happily. You'll notice him normally sat behind me here on the lamp over there. And he just sits in my office. At the moment, he's just sat on the desk looking at me. And yeah, you can you can pick one up. I, I recently launched a store, so you can go and get one from there. 
And yeah, he's just a little companion. I wanted one that would be able to sit, because on, on the bridge of a ship, you've got the, the forward windows there, and there's a little ledge that's maybe this deep, something like that, normally. And I wanted somebody that would be able to just sit on that and be able to keep a little lookout where where the ship is going. And I've been in the industry a long time, and people just haven't been able to find a nice little keepsake that reflects the passion for the industry. So, yeah, it, it just seemed like a logical thing to to make. I, I've got loads of them. <laughs> so if if you want to get one, the, the link is there on the... Um, on, on the screen now. You should find him below different videos and stuff, certainly for a little while at least. Um, we'll see how he goes. Um, if people don't like him, you'll notice there'll be quite a lot more of them behind me. So I say, I've got a load of them now. So I'll just, I'll just mention that now and you'll notice him behind or underneath videos on YouTube and there'll be, there'll be links here and there and I'll mention him in some videos and stuff like that. Yeah, he's, he's called The Little Captain and if he's successful, I don't know, I, I, <laughs> the other one I really want to do is a little pilot, but I think a little pilot would be a little bit more niche than a little captain, so I thought we'll, we'll start off with one of these, and if everyone enjoys it, then I'd, I'd love to have the whole crew, so, <laughs> so we shall see about that, but yes. Uh, so, back to the questions. Do you enjoy working with different nationalities on board? Yes, it's one of the best things, actually, because... Um, all the different cultures and stuff like that, they, they've all got different customs and things like that and different celebrations, so obviously I'm used to having Christmas and and all that kind of stuff and they, they'll celebrate that with us and then other nationalities, I mean, on the ship we <laughs> used to have great, great events for things like Eid and all, all those other sort of like different festivals that all come from different cultures and a ship is unique because, yeah, everyone, uh, everyone just, you're all there working together, you're all in, in one place and you're all just one team and it's irrelevant where you come from, um, I say what language you speak, but obviously you need to be able to communicate with each other, but yeah, it's, it's a beautiful thing about ships is that, yeah, there, there's all sorts going on and things like that. Yeah, I, I love working with different nationalities on board. Okay, right, we're going to hop back over to YouTube comments and we'll blast through another couple of these because I've just noticed we're coming up to... Uh, we've just passed three quarters of an hour. So <laughs> Oops. Uh, well, we'll carry on with some questions. If you're still ans asking them, then I'll carry on for a little bit longer. Uh, someone here, did you gain weight? Probably. <laughs> I do like my food. On cruise ships especially... You you get so many good meals and things, it's it's almost impossible not to. Um, someone else, I think I've watched all the videos so far. Thank you. Um, yeah, I, I hope you enjoy them. Um, good evening. Good evening. Um, hello from Romania. I like your content very much. Please continue. So, thank you very much. Um, ah, so the person going on about my weight is confusing me with other YouTubers, apparently. <laughs> That, that's all right. I'm very thick-skinned, so that's probably where the weight comes from. So, <laughs> yes. Um, do you do a lot of private streams? Um, I've for the last couple of months, I've been just doing them in uh, with, with patrons and stuff. I do. Uh, it's been about two a month, so I'll do one with um, people in the second mate and chief mate tier, or second mates and above. And it's it's just a, a monthly hangout, so we'll just sit, we'll have, we'll have a chat, we might talk about some videos, I might go through some analytics, I might answer a load of comments or or something like that. If people want if people have got any questions, they come and ask me in those in those private streams and things. And then the other one that I do also once a month, but with the chief mate tier and above, is we sit and we plan out the videos for the following month. So uh, this what are we now we're May. So we, we did one in in April, where we planned out May's videos, so in the next couple of weeks, is it next week, possibly the week after, I can't remember now, but we've got another planning session where we'll then plan out the following month, and I like to get people in that tier, sort of like they're, they're a bit more involved in like the production, so you can, you can come along to the planning sessions if you, if 
you want to name any of the vessels in the, in the in there or occasionally plant some easter eggs and stuff like that in the videos as well so yeah we, we do a couple of streams in the in the community each month um yeah could you do a video on obsolete ships in the future could do um yes i hadn't really thought of that um i guess every ship becomes obsolete in time doesn't it so yeah what software do you use to make videos Right, well, yeah, we've been through the illustration software, so that was, um, yeah, it eventually ends up in Adobe Illustrator, but then to actually do the animation, I use After Effects. Uh, well, combination of After Effects and Premiere Pro. So I have Premiere Pro, which assembles the whole video, and then I chop that up into lots and lots of little bits, and each of those little bits I take into After Effects, and I actually create the individual scenes over in After Effects, and After Effects is what does all the animation and things. Um, I do need to have a quick look at other things, so, I mean, because the Adobe Suite is, is not cheap, it's it's just gone up to just over £50 a month or something like that. Obviously, I can justify it, because that's, that's one of the benefits of doing YouTube, but, yeah, I, I do want to check out things like DaVinci Resolve. I had to go at DaVinci Resolve a while ago, and Fusion is their equivalent of After Effects, but the the draw on system resources was quite a lot higher than the Adobe suite for, for the laptop I had at the time so obviously things have changed since then so I might give it another go but the thing with the Adobe suite obviously is everything is all integrated so I can go and make an update in Illustrator if I need to change the colour of a ship <laughs> change it from blue to red or something like that I can just change it in Illustrator and it'll update it across the whole video so it's a massive time-saving thing if you've linked everything through correct. So, yeah, I, I do the I, I do the Adobe Suite for that. Um, any chance you could do a video on the St Lawrence Seaway and the Welland Canal? Yes, um, I, I've briefly mentioned it in some videos. We've not, we've not gone in depth or as anything like that. Um, but yeah, di different seaways and things. I had a go at doing one about about the Panama Canal, but it, it didn't, I mean, it, it was a fun one to do, but it, it didn't end up doing great. Um, so St. Lawrence, yeah, we could definitely do it. I think I think I just need to find the right angle to come at that one from, but yes. Uh, someone's saying, I find the episodes on the maritime accident reports really interesting. It follows a story even I can understand. Well, thank you. That's, that's the, um, that's one of the goals with it actually, because these reports get published by Sort of like uh, in the UK, it's the MIOB, in the States, it's the NTSB, or in Australia, it's the ATSB or New Zealand equivalent. And anyway, all these national authorities publish them. And the whole idea of them is to give you all the information about exactly what happened to try and prevent them from happening again. But the problem is, they publish them, it's in a lovely report, goes on their website, and yeah, some people stay up to date with it and things, but not many people actually read them. So one of the things I've been trying to do with the channel is to, to pull some of those and present it in the way that makes it, makes it shareable and makes it just interesting for everyone to watch. So hopefully, without realising it, you're actually getting the benefits of accident reports just through social media. Um, but yeah, I find them fascinating to make and I love storytelling in there. And yeah... Yeah, I'm, I'm, glad, I'm glad you enjoy those ones. Who drives the ship goes to sleep? Uh, so, well, we all take it in turns, actually. Um, yeah, you, you have watch keepers. You do four hours on, eight hours off, and you sleep during the eight hours off when somebody else is driving. Um, who drives when the master goes to sleep? Yes, exactly. And so that's the same thing. Can you make a video on LNG ships? Yes, could do. Are you meaning LNG as a cargo or LNG powered ships? Um, yeah, bo both could be interesting. Uh, I know there's quite a few cruise ships actually that are becoming LNG powered and things like that. So yeah, it could be interesting looking at the different propulsion methods and and all that kind of stuff. Uh, will you consider becoming a real captain? Uh, no, I, <laughs> I I've I've been a pilot actually for. It was about six years or so, and as a pilot, I got to do the bit of the captain's job that I would love, so the ship handling and things. If I was to become an actual captain, 
I would kind of be doing that. I'd be doing some ship handling, but I'd also get a whole load of paperwork and a whole load of other stuff that I just don't have any interest in doing. So for, for me, being a pilot allowed me to do the best bits of the captain's work without having to worry about um, yeah all, all the downsides. So no, I've, I've got no intention of actually being a captain, I must say. Um, it's, it is a great career if, if that's what you enjoy, but for me, it's, it's just not for me now. Um, people just saying thank you so much. Um, someone else saying South Shields is great. It's one of the only colleges I haven't been to, actually. I've been to quite a few of the others. Um, but yeah. Um, could you make a video on the MS Munchen? Yes, it's, it is on my list, actually, of ones that I would like to do. Um, yes, it was it was hit by rogue waves and things like that. So um, yeah, I, I would like to do the Munchen. Um, it's not it's not in the it's not in the it's not planned in for any time soon, but it is one that I'd like to hit at some point. Um, yeah, did you go to Maritime College? My son wants to become a captain of a cruise ship, and he asked me what cruise lines you worked for and what cadet ship did you do. Yes, I went to college here in the UK. Um, I was with Carnival. In the UK, so that covered P&O Cruises and Cunard, um, and each of the each of the cruise lines does their own recruitment separately. So obviously they combine the two. You've got the others in the Carnival umbrella, so like they they all recruit separately, and then obviously you've got things like Royal Caribbean, Norwegian, um, all those different lines, and they'll all take on cadets and put cadets through college. And once you're working on the ship, you then work up and it would be 15, 20 years, something like that, between sort of like cadetship and finally making it up to the to the rank of captain. So it's it's a long time and it's a big commitment, but it's it's an amazing it's an amazing goal to have. If I, I wish your son all the best if that's if that's his dream, definitely. Uh, your videos are great to download and watch while underway. Hello from submarine viewers. <laughs> yes. Obviously, I, I can't I can't say anything as as long as you're complying with YouTube's policies. I'm happy. <laughs> Can you make a story of the Arthur M. Anderson? Well, that one was in uh, the one about the Fit Edmund Fitzgerald. Um, could have a look at focusing on their story in particular. Um, possibly, we'll see. Um, yeah. Right. So we we'll just do a couple more questions, and then I think we're going to wrap it up around the one hour mark. Um, Right, we ever do a video on nuclear side? Possibly. Um, with my physics background, I, I loved all things nuclear. I actually, <laughs> part of my degree was in nuclear astrophysics, so the astro was in there and nuclear is in there, so yes, possibly we'll do something on, on nuclear at some point. Uh, silly question, have you ever demonstrated or used any sort of safety or survival equipment? For example, set off one of those inflatable life jackets or done anything with lifeboats? Yes. We've done, I mean, part of your training is core safety courses and things, and you spend a week lowering lifeboats and inflating life rafts and all that kind of stuff. And it's actually something that I might do on the channel at some point if I can work out um, work out how to present it slightly differently. Um, possibly something to do with a life raft. It'd be a little, little way down the line, but I don't know. I mean, if, if things like these streams and stuff keep going, then yeah, we might be able to go and buy a life raft and I'll, I'll show it to all you guys and we'll, we'll inflate it together and things. Who knows? The possibilities are endless. Uh, what do you think the future fuel for bulk carriers will be? Uh, I don't know. It's uh, At some point, I assume it's all going to go electric. It's just how you store that electricity is the, <laughs> is the big question. Um, whether you can generate it there and then, obviously you've got diesel electric now, so you can have a diesel engine powering it, but obviously if you can get slightly cleaner sources of that electricity, then yeah. How big of a no-no is it to change the name of a boat? Um, I think it's okay. This is a superstition, obviously. Obviously, yes, it's fine, but no, soup from a superstition perspective, um, it's okay, but I think you need to rechristen them. So if they've had a naming ceremony and you've smashed the bottle and things like that, I think if you change their name, you need to go through that again because otherwise, 
like the sea gods and things like that. They don't know, they, they, they don't associate the name with that vessel and they won't offer it the same protection as they would have done if it had been christened properly. Um, yeah, it could be a fascinating topic to go through. Um, Battle of... Uh, Battle of May. Uh, I haven't heard of that. It, it could make an interesting topic, definitely. Does Sailor have a wife in every port? <laughs> uh, no. no, no, no. I'm, I'm sure some probably do, but generally, no. Generally, we don't actually have time in every port nowadays. You, cargo loading is so so efficient and things like that. It's all like that. you're in and out and gone. Um, yeah. Sorry, late for the live stream. That, that's all right. No, I'm, I'm glad you could make it along a little bit. Um, we're going to be doing more of these, so you'll see them pop up every now and then. I, I'm not going to commit to anything regular with these, but I say you'll, you'll see them pop up in community tabs and events and things like that. So keep an eye out and, yeah, come and ask questions, send them to me in advance or whatever. And, yeah. Right. I think that's about it for this evening. So thank you very much. I've, I've got lots of people saying thank you and things again. Um... Yeah, thank you all. I, I couldn't do this without you. So, no, thank you. I hope you've enjoyed this evening. I say I, I am going to be doing more of these live streams. I'd like to do another ship handling session. I, I've tried to keep it separate from the question and answer now because I I, I missed a load of comments, basically, where I'm, I'm glued into the ship handling side of it. I, I just didn't have time to read the comments. So, yeah, I, I'm, I'm hopefully doing another ship handling at some point soon. And... Yeah, we'll, we'll see about more live streams as well. I, I do enjoy those. So, yeah, I hope you all have a fantastic evening. I say, if you want to check out The Little Captain at all, you'll find links below all the videos now. I, th I, think, he's, I think he's there, part of the official channel store. So, yeah, he's there. Otherwise, you'll notice a whole load of them behind me in a few weeks' time. So, we shall see. Anyway, have a fantastic evening, and we shall speak again next time. Good night.